Oh, so you want me to go to the Quran? I go to the Quran. You have no clue what it means. And if I go to the Bible, that's the Bible. So how do you want me to answer anything about Jesus when you don't know what the Quran says? And when I go to the Bible, you question it. So which book do you want me to use to prove my okay. point? For sake of argument, go to Bible. Okay. I want you to first go to chapter 57, verse 3 for me. Of your Quran, first. He is the first and the last, the ascendant and the intimate, and he is of all things knowing. Okay, so he's the what? The first and the last. Now, if you have a Bible, do you have a Bible with you? Of course I do. Okay. Revelation 1, 17. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Okay, now pause right there. According to your crown, who's the first and the last? Allah. Okay, now read Revelation 1, 17 again. So Allah is the first and last. Read Revelation 1, 17. One more time. When I saw him, I fell at his feet all as though dead. Then he based his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Now read verse 18. I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, I am alive forever and ever and I hold keys of death and Hades okay so when did your Allah die Allah yeah he never died yeah he did you just read it said the first and last I'm the first and last and I was dead well so when did your God Allah die uh, that, I, I have no answer for that so your God Allah died and you don't know and you have no answer for that no, he didn't die. He didn't no, well, wait, wait, wait. The Quran says Allah is the first and last. And here the first and last says, I died and I came to life. That's Allah, your God, Muhammad's God. So you're saying Jesus is the first and the last. Uh, did I say it or you just read it? What did you just read? Well, I'm saying is that your interpretation of that? What did you just read? Forget my interpretation. You just read. Who said, I'm the first and last and I'm the living one who died and came to life? And according to the Quran, who's that? Allah. So you just admit Allah died. So when did Allah die? When did Allah uh, die? Come on. He didn't die. Uh, he yes, he did. You just uh, read it. I am the first and last. I am the living one and was dead. Your God, Allah, died. When? I have no clue. I don't believe Allah. Uh, maybe Jesus died. But so you're admitting Jesus is God because he claimed to be first and last. Um, well, maybe he was temporarily God. Oh, okay. I didn't know God moment. can be temporary God and then decide to then give up that temporary divinity. All right. Now go to chapter 22 of the Quran, Surah Al-Hajj, chapter 22. Yes. God is the truth, and because He gives life to the dead, and slowly, because He is slowly, capable of everything. Slowly, buddy, slowly. And yes. that is because Allah is the truth, and because He gives life to the dead, and because He is capable of everything. And because the hour is coming, there is no doubt about it, and because Allah will resurrect those in the graves. Okay, now, your Quran is clear. Allah is the truth, and He is the one who gives life. And then the hour is coming where Allah will raise them from the graves, right? Right. Will there be someone other than Allah at the last day to raise people out of their graves at the hour? Never, never. Only Allah. Only Allah, right? Yes. Go to, John, go to the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse 21. Okay. Read that uh, for me. John 5, 21. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Okay, now before you move on, if you read, that's Jesus speaking. So what did Jesus say? Read it again, 521. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Okay, so the Son, like the Father, gives life to whomever he wants. Okay, now read verse 25. Verse 25? Hmm? Uh, wait, which book again? The same Gospel of John that you just read, my friend. The same one you just read where Jesus is speaking. Don't lose your place. Stay in that chapter. Read verse 25. 22, right? Verse oh, 25. Oh, I hate you. Verily, truly, I say, I tell you, a time is coming and has now come where the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Okay, say that again. What did Jesus say in 25? Read it slowly. Verily, truly, I say, I, I tell you, a, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God hmm. and those who will hear will live. Now you're chuckling because I'm suspecting something, but I'm going to confirm my suspicion in a minute. That word time is also our because you're in NIV. So Jesus said the hour, the time is coming where the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. Now read verse. This is silly. See? This is silly, though. Why? Because you beat your wife, man. Why are you beating your wife, exactly. man? Exactly. See, I know it. Why'd you beat your wife? Because I'm trying to be a good Muslim. Why'd you beat your wife? Good one. Trying to be a good Muslim. Now, Sean, is that Why'd you, you again? Beat your wife? Is that you again, Sean? Divorce you, dude. Why oh, because I, I, I was acting like Muhammad. Because I was I acting like Muhammad. Girl mods in the chat. <laughs> you were talking to the girl. Oh, do I look cute? Yeah. See, it was about time he's gonna expose himself. What did you say? You read it. It says the Quran is perfectly what? Perfectly. Explained. Okay, so perfectly explained. Now, perfectly explained means if you explain something completely thoroughly, it lacks nothing. So I want you to keep that in mind. Perfectly explained, right? Right. Go to chapter 10. So the is chapter 10, verse 37. Do not walk on the earth in hunting style. You nope, can that's not leave. chapter 10. Go to chapter 10. So that the oh, I thought you said chapter 17. No, chapter Rifle. 10, verse 37. And it was not possible for this Quran to be produced by other than Allah, but it is a confirmation of what was before and a detailed explanation of the former scripture about how where there's no doubt from the Lord of the worlds. Okay, now notice it is a detailed explanation of the former scripture, meaning 
it explains everything in detail. When you explain something in detail, it lacks nothing. And if it's perfectly explained, that means it's complete. Something complete lacks nothing. I just want you to keep in mind what your Quran is saying. And the Arabic is even clearer. Now, go to chapter 12. Surat al-Yusuf, chapter 12, verse 111. There was certainty in the stories, a lesson of those of understanding. Neither was the Quran a narration invented, but a confirmation of what was before it, and a detailed explanation of all things and guidance and mercy for all people who believe. Now, I want you to read this slowly because I want it to sink in. And Samaritan says, it is a detailed explanation of all things, right? Right, right. Okay, so don't forget what the Quran is saying, and I want everyone else to listen. The Quran in chapter 12, verse 111 says, it is a detailed explanation of all things. Not some things, but all things, right? Yes, sir. All right, good. Yes, sir. Now, with that said, go to chapter 41, verse 3 of the Quran. Chapter 41? Verse 3. A book whose verses are elaborated in the form of the Arabic Quran for our people who understand. Now, a book in which verses are elaborated or explained in detail. It's the same idea. So, just right. so I can repeat for the benefit of ever others. The Quran, this is just few of the many, repeats itself over and over again. This Quran explains all things in detail. It is perfectly explained. It elaborates, explains its verses in detail, meaning everything you need to know about the Quran and everything contained therein will be found in the Quran because it explains everything perfectly. That's what you just read. It's clear as day. I can give you more, but I think... This suffices to establish my point because yes, this was part of my this was going to be part of my conversation. I was going to address Ahmad Didat. Go to chapter 25, verse 2. 25 verse 2. Again? Chapter 25, Surat Al Furqan, chapter 25, verse 2. He to whom belong the the kingdoms of the heaven and the earth, who took himself no son, who never had a partner yes. in his kingship, who created everything and determined its measure. Yes, thank you. You know what? One second, my friend. I, the reason why I gave you chapter 25, verse 2, is because I often use that to prove the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I I, I had thought that Didat had quoted this. I'm sorry. Uh, one second. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you know what? Didat didn't quote 25. You know why? Can I tell you why he didn't quote 25? Because he was quoting chapter 27, verses verse 1. You see? I got to confuse the 25 too. You see? I'm thinking so many subjects, but it's okay, friend. I'm... Even though I'm the closest thing to Masum, no, I'm kidding. Read chapter 27, verse 1 of the Quran. Hold on, I lost my bookmark. It's okay, I lost my, my, my mind. So I'm trying to find my mind as you're filing your bookmark. 27, verse 1 of the Quran. These are the verses of the Quran and a clear book. Okay, the reason why I'm bringing this up, and I'm going to give you a chance to answer, because one of the objections Didat raised, and I know you're not here to defend Didat, but I'm trying to kill two birds, one stone, by the grace of God. Didat says that the Quran identifies itself, unlike the Bible, which doesn't, call itself the Bible, which I'll refute. But now you read, this is the Quran. Now, my question for you, here's my question. I'm going to say it slowly so everyone, not just you, will get it. The Quran claims to be a book that explains all things, everything, perfectly, in detail. So now, you have a Quran in your hand. Can you show me where in the Quran does the Quran tell you what the Quran is? Meaning, you read a verse saying this Quran, but what is this Quran? How many chapters make up the Quran and how do you know? Where does the Quran give you that information? Well, for one, I think that if you go to the prophets, the prophets confirm the Quran, so the Quran That's is not built together my by them. You're begging the question. How do you know what the Quran is? You see, again, you beg the question, so I'm going to repeat it again, because I know you're not going to answer. How do you know what the Quran is? Can you show me where the Quran tells you? This is the Quran, and this is how many chapters make up the Quran, and this is the name of the chapters, and how many verses in each chapter. You just begged the question. You just did what I knew you were about to do. So let's try it again. Where does the Quran tell you what the Quran is? Uh, I do not know uh, anywhere where the Quran says where it is, what it is. Okay. So now, what is the oldest source you have that tells you what the Quran is, how many chapters make up the Quran, and how many verses each chapter contains? What's the oldest source that gives you that information? Uh, from my knowledge, the Ma'il Quran from 700... In 799 AD would be like the first Quran. And how many chapters in that Quran? Uh, I believe about 102. Okay. So, in other words, you're now appealing to sources outside of the Quran. You said about what year again? I'm going to go by your dating. I'm just going to assume your dating is right. Between 700 and 799. Okay, so between 700 and 799. So, that means long after the reported death of your prophet. What year did your prophet die? What year did Muhammad die? Which prophet? There's many prophets. Well, the only prophet that you follow, because in your shahada, you don't say, La ilaha illallah. 632 AD. Now, how do you know he died 632 AD? Where'd you get that from? Well, I believe it's in the Quran. Show me in the Quran where it says Muhammad was born this date and died this date. Uh, I'm not sure. 
Yeah, so in other words, even the information about Muhammad, when he was born and what year he died, comes from these sources that are 100 years removed from when he reportedly died. But wait, did you not just read in chapter 12, verse 111? Go to back to chapter 12, verse 111. Read it again. Chapter 12, verse 111. There was certainly in their stories a lesson of those of understanding. Neither was the Quran a narration invented, but a confirmation of what was before it, and a detailed explanation of all things and guidance for the mercy of those who believe. You just falsified the Quran, because the Quran says it is a detailed explanation of all things, and yet you couldn't tell me what the Quran is, how many chapters make up the Quran, how many verses each chapter contains, when your prophet was born, when he died. So you just falsified the Quran. Well, maybe I'm not knowledgeable. Maybe someone knows... That no, believe me, you can bring your greatest scholars and none of them can answer these questions. So don't don't feel too bad. Don't be hard on yourself. My imam never told me this. Yeah, because your mom can't answer. And don't take my word for it. When you go to the masjid, you ask him these questions. Say, here's what the Quran says. Show me the answers from the Quran. He can't. So don't be hard on yourself. It's not that you're not intelligent. You sound intelligent. and I'm not patronizing you. These are answers your book can never answer because it's not true. That's the point. But now let me give you another example. Go to chapter 33, verse 37 of the Quran. 33, verse what? 37 of the Quran. Chapter 33, verse 37. Ah, uh, yes, I hear you. It says, and remember, O Muhammad, what you said to, to the one whom Allah bestowed favor and you bestowed favor. Keep your wife and fear Allah. Well, while you concealed within yourself that which Allah has is disclosed, and you feared the people, while Allah has more right than you, fear him. So when Zayd had no longer had any need for her, we married her to you in order that there would not be upon the believers any discomfort concerning the wives of their adopted sons when they no longer have need of them. And ever is the command of Allah accomplished. Okay, what is this passage talking about? It says, Zayed, he told this guy, Zayed, keep your wife, but then Zayed somehow didn't keep his wife because Muhammad was going to set an example that other people could marry the divorced wives of their adopted sons. Who is Zayed? Right. That's one of Muhammad's wives. Zayed? No, no, not Zayed. Zayed's wife became Muhammad's wife. But Zayed, who's Zayed? Oh, Zayed? Yes. That's the adopted son. Uh, where does the passage say it's Muhammad's adopted son? Well, Zayed was adopted son. He yeah, but where adoption. does the Quran say that? And I noticed what you just said. I'm glad you said it. You said Muhammad abolished adoption? Yes, sir. Why did, he, why did he abolish adoption? Well, I believe he abolished adoption uh, because of his... He didn't... They were uh, the, the people at that time were making fun of him, I believe, or attacking him for oh. having an the whole situation with the wife and everything. So Good. I think that Allah gave him a revelation saying that adoption is abolished to fix that problem. So you're okay with your God, Allah, destroying adoption because Muhammad took his adopted son's divorced wife, which your verse said he did it for an example for others to do. But what kind of example is he setting when your God then abolished adoption? How's he an example for others? Uh, well, maybe not his entire life. This happened, within a short, this happened within a short time span. So it didn't take uh, dozens of years after Muhammad married Zayed's divorced wife. But even if that's the case, didn't your God know that he was going to abolish adoption? Yes, of course. So then why have Muhammad marry his adopted son's divorced wife as an example for others who could also marry their adopted son's divorced wife when Allah knew he's going to abolish adoption? Well, this may be part of Allah's greater plan. He the might greater be plan to have his prophet marry a married woman who is married to his adopted son and then because he got mocked for it, then abolish adoption. And this is the wisdom of Allah. Well, I do believe that the Prophet here was not perfect in his ways. And I oh, so he's not perfect. Okay. You admit that? Yes, of course. Okay. And so... No Prophet's perfect. Uh, well, no. According to your Quran, Jesus and his mother are perfect and sinless. Well, yes. True, true, true. Say it again? True. So Jesus you, and Mary are perfect. And But you just said no Prophet is said, perfect, right? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I... Uh, I forgot because I was thinking of Moses and Moses, of course, yeah. was not a perfect prophet. So I'm glad you admit it. You're a very honest young man. And because you're honest, the Lord Jesus will bring you into his light. Because if you're honest, he will honor that. So you just admit to everyone. Everyone heard you. Jesus and Mary are perfect. They are sinless. But all the other prophets, like Moses, they're sinful. Excellent. So now go to chapter sure. 16, verse 61 of the Quran. 16, verse 61. Okay. If Allah were to seize the people of their transgression, he would spare no creature on earth, but he lets them go on a, on a appointed time. So when the time come, they will not be able to delay it for a moment, nor to bring it soon. Okay, do you understand what you just read, what that verse just said? Yes, sir. And so you, yeah, you see it says that if Allah were to call people into account for their wrongdoing, he wouldn't leave a single creature on the earth, right? Right. Which means no creature can be sinless and perfect, right? Uh, well. That's what it says. Yeah. Say it again. Yeah. I want I want to make sure everyone followed you. That verse just said, 
if Allah were to call people into account for their wrongdoing, He wouldn't leave a single creature on earth, meaning no creature sinless and perfect, right? Correct, correct. That's the flood. Yeah, but hold on. No, that's not the flood. It's talking long after the flood. It's so I'm just saying it in comparison. Okay, but now you confuse me because you just said, everyone heard, you just said Jesus and Mary are perfect and sinless. So then how can yes. they be mere, mere creatures according to that verse? Uh, well, maybe Jesus and Mary were not just mere creatures. Oh, so you did. We're not just mere men. You really? Maybe. I, I don't know for sure, but I think Mary and Jesus may have some sort of evolution. Maybe. Are you? I mean, I just want to make sure for the record because you have a Muslim, but are you really a Muslim? Oh, of course, sir. Yes. All right. Okay. Because what you're saying is shocking admissions from a Muslim, but so far so good. So you just admit that Jesus and Mary may be more than creatures. So then if they're more than creatures, then you just made them divine. Well, you don't necessarily have to be divine to be more than a creature. Hold on one second. So you're saying you don't have to be necessarily divine if you're more than a creature, then what does that make you? Uh, if you're more than a creature, because notice what you're saying, creature. Creature means something created. If you're more than a creature, then that means you are not created. If you're not created, then you're divine. Well, maybe Jesus and Mary have some of Allah's attribute. You, are, you, you, you sure about that, man? You, you sure you can say that? No, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. Just hear me out for a second. Go I'm ahead. saying that Jesus and Mary may have some of Allah's divine attributes. However, that does not necessarily make them God. That's not what so, but wait, you're saying Allah conferred on Mary and Jesus some of his divine attributes, but I yes. thought that's the definition of shirk. Shirk is that you take partners with Allah, either in his worship or his attributes or in his lordship. Well, maybe they don't perfectly embody the attributes of Allah. So then that means they're imperfect, but then that contradicts yes, what you imperfect. said early. Well, hold on. You just said they are perfect and nowhere in the Quran says they're imperfect. Well, perfect in what way? <clears throat> well, however the Quran defines it, meaning flawless sinless morally pure right because in chapter 19 verse right. 19 of the quran it says Gulam and Zakian, he is a pure son and then in chapter 3 verse 42 mary is said to be purified meaning that allah created her pure something he didn't do for right. anyone else right right so i'd like to make the point that maybe prophet jesus peace be upon him maybe he maybe he had a divine okay. attributes but they were not perfectly embodied by jesus Christ. so you can imperfectly embody divine attributes yes. so i didn't know that divine attributes can be imperfectly embodied because if you possess a divine attribute in the way that jesus does because he's perfect then that means he perfectly embodies it but you're attributing mm -hmm. imperfection to someone you just said is perfect right but how uh, is that possible instance, in, i would like to make a point that in the bible it says god created you in the image of in his image correct yeah but that but doesn't mean that doesn't mean you're uh, not perfect though right no 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 you're you're confusing too many issues and i'm going to have to educate you on there can you show me in that passage in genesis 126 that when god creates man in his image that image means that man by design was created to be immutably morally incorruptible because part of the image of god is to bestow on man the ability to make choices but that's not the same in the quran i because we're focusing on the sinlessness of jesus and mary in contrast to 1661 which says no creature is sinless but you just admit jesus and mary are sinless right but the quran says no creature is sinless so go to my bible to try to then defend this problem in the quran doesn't help you because to be created in the image of god one essential aspect of being in God's image is the ability to choose. Right. Okay, but that's not the definition of the Quran. The Quran in 1661 says that Allah would destroy every creature if he calls into account creation for their wrongdoing, meaning a creature is not sinless, but Jesus and Mary are sinless. So that means if the Quran doesn't contradict, Jesus and Mary can't be creatures. That's the point I'm getting at. I'm using the Quran right. line. Well, maybe it's an exception. Maybe Jesus and Mary were just an exception of that rule he made. How is that possible when 1661 says he would leave no creature alive on earth? Yes, but was Jesus alive at that time? So you're saying that it's only specific to Muhammad's time and not before or after? Uh, well, I'm not saying that for sure. I'm saying okay. All right. possibly. Okay let's, possibly. okay, let's move on to something else. Do you, do you well, see or Shia, I don't know if you believe this. Um, the parents of your prophet, Amina and Abdullah, yes. were they of the mushrikun when they died or were they uh, worshippers of the one true god uh, i believe they were worshippers of the one true god how do you know this well um i believe maybe uh that's what i assume because that's what my mom told me oh and mom told all you of <laughs> all of muhammad's relatives were sinless and that's sinless but they were worshiping of allah really and so this imams where did he get this from did he get it from the quran uh yes sir i assume so where does the quran say muhammad's parents were worshippers of the true God and that they were guided and that they were Muslim when the Quran says that Muhammad was found straying. He was straying and Allah guided him. Right. So how could he be straying 
if his parents were already worshiping the true God, that means he was born in a household where he knew the true God and wasn't astray and needed to be then guided aright. Right. So then his parents, where do you get that they were worshipers of the true God and not mushrikun, meaning of those who worshiped idols? Well, I mean, this is generally accepted by the... Um, all the people that I know that they yeah, were, of course. That is, so, but I do not know myself. I will admit that. Uh, good. I'm, I'm happy. That's what I'm saying. Because you have an open heart to the truth, you will come to the truth. I, I Trust me. I will be hearing from you soon, and you're going to be end up worshiping the true God revealed in Jesus. But let's put that aside for now. So this is my point. You being spoon-fed by what your imams are telling you, and yet blindly you follow without questioning, where did you get that from? What verse in the Quran or what hadith? When was this hadith written? Why do you, when it comes to your religion, blindly follow what your imams say, but when it comes to other things in life, you'll question in order to learn the truth and the facts of the matter? That is very true. In fact, I believe Islam teaches not to ask questions. So I find it when I ask the questions, I get into so much. I'm a disarray. I don't understand. So I, I say maybe I just maybe I just accept and I don't worry about it because it's so confusing that I just keep it out of my mind. So why don't you consider leaving Islam and following the truth in Jesus Christ? What's stopping you? Well, I, I, I just don't want, like, I heard the message of Jesus from many people and it, you know, it touches my heart very daily, but I, I don't understand. I, first of all, I don't want to commit shirk and I don't want to go to hell forever. So I don't know. Yeah, but that means if you think the Quran is true, that if you do end up worshiping Jesus, God's son, you're going to go to hell. But that means yeah. you think that the Quran is true. What makes you think the Quran is true? Uh, well, many, many, uh, scientific medicals. There, my friend, if we're going to talk about scientific miracles, we're going to talk about the scientific nightmare of the Quran because the miracle is reinterpreting the Quran to make it agree with science. For example, go to chapter 18 of the Quran, verse 86. Chapter 18, verses 86. 86. Yeah, just read that for me. Now watch. You know what the real miracle is? How you're going to explain it away and interpret the Arabic to make it agree with science because you're the one who claims scientific miracles. So I'm going to show you. Arabic is just as clear as the English. English is just as clear as Arabic unless the Muslim translator mistranslates. There are gross scientific errors in the Quran that your scholars have to explain away in order to make it agree with science. And I'm going to give you a few. Go to chapter 18, verse 86. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Read that for me. Until when he reached the setting of the sun, he found it as if setting in a see now, spring of darkness. You see that what your translation did? As if. The as if is not in the Arabic. Oh, well, okay. And he found it near a people. Allah said, O Dahul al Quran, either you punish them or you adopt them among them, a way of goodness. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Do you read Arabic? Uh, some, some of it. Some okay. of it. If you go to the Arabic, it doesn't say as if. Your translation deceived you. It says, he reached the setting place of the sun until he found its setting in a muddy spring. Does the sun set in a muddy spring? No, no, no. Of course not. But your, the, the Arabic says he found it. It didn't say as if or it appeared to him. He went to where it sets. He found the location of where it sets and he saw it setting in a muddy spring. How is that possible? Well, I mean, I mean, as if maybe he was added in later to help understand the verse. Yeah, but that's not in the Arabic. That's the English. Your translator added it in the English. The Arabic says he found it setting. <laughs> I mean, does, does the Bible have every verse from Hebrew and Greek perfectly matched? Now, you notice you just changed the argument. You're the one who said the Quran is true because of scientific miracles. Why is yes. it when I show you there are errors, you jump to the Bible? So do you well, now deny that the Quran? No, no. It, 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 this is not about variant readings in the original language. The Arabic Quran reads the same. You're basing it on the English when the translator added as if. Your Arabic doesn't say as if. I mean, that's true. That's true. It doesn't. Okay, so you're the one who said the Quran is true because of scientific miracles. I didn't make yeah. that claim for the Bible. So to go to the Bible means that you're admitting the Quran has problems, but now you're trying to tell me, ah, oh, but your Bible has problems. Ha <laughs> ha This is called the two quokey fallacy. I didn't claim the Bible is true because of scientific miracles. You claim the Quran is true because of scientific true. miracles. Okay, now I want you to go to chapter 41, verses 9 to 12 for me. 41, verses 9 to 12 for me. Okay, I understand. Read it slowly, not fast. Oh, say, oh, do you really believe th in the one who created the earth in two days and ascribed to him partners? Count now. That, do me a favor. Count with me the days. He created the earth in two days, right? Yes. Okay, so now go ahead. Uh, do, uh, in the Lord of the worlds. Keep going. He has placed firm mountains in it, towering above it, and put blessings in it, and put portion his foods that in. In four days. Now, before you move on, slowly, 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 though, slowly, so we read. Two days, and then the nourishment and the mountains, he created how many days? Four days. Okay, finish that verse. It's uh, verse 10. Finish verse 10 again. They're in, equal for those who ask. Okay, how many days is that? Do the math for me. Two days the earth, four days its nourishment, then in the mountain. How many days is that? Two plus four. Uh, six days. Okay, now, read 11 and 12. Of course. And he turned straight to the sky while, while it was a smoke and said to it and to the earth, Come. 
to my obedience, both of you, willingly or unwillingly, both said, we come willingly. Okay. Now, before you finish it, scientifically, can you name me a scientist that believes that the earth was created four days and then only later the heaven <laughs> was created after the earth and that when the earth was already fashioned, the heaven was still smoke? No, of course not. But I do not believe in evolution. I believe it's a lie. Okay, well, that's fine. So what do you believe? How can you have the earth coming before the heaven? Because the earth has to be situated somewhere, right? Where was it right. situated? Well, that I got, no one could understand that. This no, it's is not about natural. understanding. Meaning, when you create the earth, it is situated right. in the universe. Because even now, forget evolution. Where is the earth suspended? In the universe, right? Right. But Absolutely. according to your verse, there was no universe. So where was the earth suspended? Because Wait, it says, where is saying no universe? Verse 11, it says, when he turned to the sky, actually it's heaven in Arabic, when it was smoke, and he said to it and the earth, come willingly or unwillingly, and they said, we come willingly. And then verse 12 says, he created that heaven into seven heavens. Right. So where was the universe? Uh, he created it, uh, cre maybe it's not there. Maybe he didn't include the universe being created part. Verses 11 and 12 is part of the universe, unless you believe that the seven heavens don't include the universe at all. Oh yeah, the seven heavens are not part of the universe. Who told you that? Where did you get that from the Quran? Where did the Quran say the seven heavens are not part of the universe? Well, the Quran, uh, the, the, the heavens are not material, not material. They're... Who told you that? In the Quran, show me where in the Quran says the heavens are not material. Especially uh... when in the heavens you have the lamps. So the lamps that are in the heavens, it's not the universe, it's in some imaginary, celestial, spiritual heaven has lamps, like the sun and the moon? Right. So you're saying the sun and the moon? That's in the heavens is not the material heavens. I do not believe the sun and the moon to be physical. So I think you're using the wrong term. So the stars, they're spiritual. Uh, well, I wouldn't say spiritual, but I would material. say they're not physical, not material. So then what, dude, you, I, I don't know uh, if, if I have to define these terms, then I don't know. Do you go to college? No, sir. Okay. Then let's put that aside. Material means that which is substantial. That which is, I don't, I mean, I don't even know how to define the terms for you because your definition is weird. So then what is, what when you see the star, what is it? It's just a phantom? The star is a uh, light. And is, is that light, light, is that light a phantom or is it something tangible and real? Real in the sense that it is within what we call the universe and the universe consists of matter, time and space. Right. Well, I, I, I see what you're saying. So matter, time, and space, the, our stars are part of that. Yes. Okay, However, but then the seven heavens, are they matter, time, and space? No, no, no. So then how do you have seven heavens that are not matter, time, and space when the stars and the sun and the moon are located in there and the earth is located in there? What are well, you talking no, I'm about? I'm saying here? heavens is no time because it's eternal. Right? Where does it say it's eternal when he just said he fashioned it into seven heavens? Are you reading your own Quran, verse 11 and 12? Uh... Well, there's seven heavens, right? So maybe no. Read uh, it. It Earth says he took the sky when it smoke and made it into seven heavens. That's not eternal. That's something that's being fashioned and formed in time. Read it, oh, verse eleven and twelve. Oh, you're right. You're right. I understand now. Okay, so you see now you're the one who appealed to science to try to prove that the Quran is a miracle, but you're all over the map because the Quran is far from being scientific. It is a scientific nightmare.